On the very same day that Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky blocked a bipartisan commission to get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th, he spent some time engaging in the age-old political tradition of grandstanding about the scourge of wasted taxpayer dollars, particularly research funded by the federal government, a favorite target of Republicans for, frankly, as long as I can remember. And in this case, the study of the sex life of Japanese quails on cocaine. Now, what is the price tag, you ask, for studying the sex habits of Japanese quails on cocaine? $356 million? Well, that does sound like quite a bit, but wait a second. What is going on, on the right side of that decimal? Did Senator Paul Staffers add an extraneous zero there to make a $356,000 grant seem like a $356 million grant? Boy, it sure looks like it. Philip Bump is the national correspondent for The Washington Post. He has written on the various dishonesties in Rand Paul's cocaine quail presentation, and he joins me now. Um, this is a whole bit with Rand Paul, Philip, you, as you discovered in your reporting. Take us through Rand Paul and the coked up Japanese quails. Sure, sure. It's, it's sort of hard to live up to that headline, but I'll do my best. Uh, yeah, I mean, so he made this presentation on Thursday. The sort of interesting thing about it was that he had made the exact same presentation two days prior with a totally different number. So on Thursday, he used the figure that he showed, $357,000 uh, or thereabouts. A couple of days earlier, he'd done one that was actually about 875000 and it turns out that if you go back in time, you can see that he's been doing the same presentation for years and years. He did in 2018 using that same $357,000 number. Well, it turns out that if you actually dig into it, what he's doing is he's actually quoting a document that was produced by Senator Tom Coburn back in 2012, <laughs> looking at this study of Japanese quail and cocaine use. The study itself ended in 2016. So this hasn't even been done at any point in the past five years. But not only is he using this outdated data, he's also using this number, this 356 whatever dot 140. The 140 isn't a sense. It's not as though he's trying to inflate the scale of this. It's actually a footnote marker from Tom Coburn's original report pointing to footnote 140, which explains where that dollar figure comes from. So not only is it not an exaggeration of millions, it's just a typo, which is, you know, just sort of the ice. Oh, the it's so good. So there's a 2011 Tom Coburn report on some study that actually was funded, right? But it got, it, right. You know, it. National Institute of Health, which funds a lot of basic research. I don't know. Maybe that would be useful to know what the, you know, coked up quails are like when they're having, you know, sexy times. I, maybe that's interesting and important. But this was a 2011 item. They, they copy and pasted it wrong, adding the 140. So it wasn't actually what I thought it was, which I was like, oh, you sly, sly okay. staffers adding an extraneous zero to a decimal to inflate the number. It's just a copy and paste error that has been carried over for 10 years. Yeah, apparently, yes. I mean, you know, the, the fact that this has been going on so long, when, when this first was introduced in Coburn's what's called Waste Book uh, in 2012, Scientific American actually did this extensive report saying, here's actually why it's useful to look at quail and cocaine use. We learn more about cocaine. Quail have this very particular mating pattern, uh, which is not ever something I thought I'd say on MSNBC. But apparently this is something of import. But Rand Paul's been running this thing so long. I mean, Tom Coburn died last year, but he lives on in this report that Rand Paul can't get enough of, in part, obviously, because that graphic of the quail with his head in the pile of powder is too irresistible. Yeah, I mean, I mean you got to look, I'm a, you know, I make TV for a living, so I, I get it. I get it. It's a visual medium. I understand why it's irresistible. Um, right. To me, what's was striking, too, about this was like it weird. On the same day they're blocking the January 6th commission, it did seem like it was teleported from a different era of like this is the kind of deception fact massaging that that i associate with a kind of politics that seems incredibly almost remote and antique increasingly yeah i mean i have a pet theory which i i really can't say is valid but i think that the fact that this was <laughs> so i'm going to just say it on tv no but i mean i think the fact that this was nah funding is important because keep in mind that grand paul's been in this battle with with right. anthony fauci for months now over the coronavirus, he is, a, you know, a fixture at the NIH. I think there may be an element here of just sort of retribution in that regard. Philip Bump, who did uh, track all this down. Thank you so much.